لقد أوحي إلى رسول الله أن يجهر بدعوته وليسمع العالم لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه الله أكبر الله أكبر محمد رسول Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Runa Funke and I'd like to explain why I believe that Imam Ahmed al Hassan is with a black banner and therefore I ask you some questions. So, did anybody else deliver the glad tidings about the return of Imam Mahdi upon the occasion of the death of King Abdullah to us except for the twelve? And did not Prophet Muhammad promise this to us? And is not Prophet Muhammad represented in this day and age by Imam Mahdi and Imam Ahmed al Hassan? Salam? And did not this, the 12 claim to have been taken by Imam Ahmed al Hassan to Imam al Mahdi? Salam? And isn't it necessary to consider any conspiracy that takes place around the vicegerent of Allah? especially if it's like coming from his close companions as very possible or at least to consider it as possible and what do you think about the officers behavior um, is it like are they behaving according to what Ahlul Bayt is like are like teaching the the people um, I mean they they call the black banner Ansar dwarfs they immediately commanded to block us um, they immediately judge that they that all of them are hypocrites um, I mean like why did Imam Ali salam, then like even on the battlefield even like some minutes before the battle start started go to his opponent and give him like the another invitation to the truth and um, why did Imam Ahmed al Hassan alayhi salam recommend to us to kill the shaitan in the other one um, with mercy and with the kind words? And what do you think about, especially about the quotes from the books of Imam Ahmed al Hassan, where he's predicting that the Ansar are going to fight him? Uh, like, for example, he's saying, it is a message like the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam, and it has the same as the message of Muhammad. It has Abu Bakr and Omar, and it has Abu Dhar and Ammar and Salman and so on. And he's also saying, and there must be a Samari and there must be a Kaf. And he's also saying, and similarly, there will be a Samari and his associates with a Mahdi. Aren't all of those um, quotes like very disturbing and um, is it not necessary to find out like whom who he means or whom he's meaning? And if you came to a point that you that you say, okay, both sides already presented their major proofs and they are not gonna be major proofs like in the next time, so um, I need to come I need to reach to a conclusion. Um, in order to like make myself available for Allah and not be like uh, between the two groups, so that I would be like automatically counted to the to the to the wrong side, or even to be with the wrong side. So is it not like perfectly halal um, if you like cannot help yourself and also other people cannot give you further information? Is it not perfectly halal to turn to Allah and do istikhara, just as Allah salam? quoted in his book, um, like a hadith from Ali ibn Mu'az that he said, I said to Safwan bin Yahya, by what thing have you determined that Ali, meaning Ali al-Rida, peace be upon him, is the Imam? He said, I prayed and supplicated to Allah, and I made istikhara, and I became certain that he was him, meaning the Imam. That was from Ghaibat al-Tusi. And how can you like not get disturbed when you heard like this um, video statement from the police representative saying that the Ansar in Iraq are two groups and the one group has permission from them like permission from the government and they know them like individual by individual and it's like obvious that they have permission because the Ansar in Iraq um, they are left at peace 
while some of them are still in the in the prisons and the Imam Ali Salam is still being chased by the government, uh, the office and uh, all the actions that they are uh, doing are like successful. They are opening uh, branch after branch. They have a satellite channel. They have a newspaper. They have all of those things. They have open gatherings. Um, so it's obvious that they have a permission from the government. So how do you like that? And how can, how is it possible in your minds that the Imam Ali Salam would ask us to uh, put our hand in the hand of Ban al Abbas and to uh, like who who are who were torturing our brothers or maybe still are torturing some of our brothers and make peace with them even for a minute? And how is it like possible that that we should believe that uh, it's a hikmah from from Allah that? this cooperation with the Iraqi uh, governmental army is like gonna be necessary and um, positive for us in order to uh, defend uh, like the country or the people or its people from ISIS. Um, I mean since when can Allah not make a small group uh, like successful even against a very big group since when do we need the, the, the assistance of the enemy? And aren't there like loads of quotes from the Imam saying um, that it's not allowed to carry a weapon, um, especially not um, especially not if you're gonna support the tyrant with it? And didn't he also say that it's not allowed to um, to like go to jihad for any any national interest? And it can it has to be like purely for upholding the word of Allah? Um, and didn't like the Maktab clearly state that they want to fight ISIS but they also said like clearly we want to defend the country and the people while while like there shouldn't be national interest in going to jihad and what do you think about uh, the Maktab asking to have a representative in the govern governorate um, uh, council of Basra doesn't that mean that he has to take part like in all legal actions that are included in the system of the supremacy of people? And how is that permissible for him to take part in all those actions? And don't you also find it weird uh, that the Imam Ali Salam was not like calling for jihad by himself, but first of all the Maktab was calling with like only like only implying that the Imam gave the command but not also not saying it clearly and they were saying it's voluntary and then the next day or a day after that the Imam Ali Salam is like uh, harshly criticize, criticizing the people who are not joining the Jihad uh, and saying that Allah is despising them and the angels are despising them. I mean if the Imam or if a leader from Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam would want everybody to go to Jihad uh, wouldn't he be like able to express that right from the start and would take his people by his hand and also motivate them or or would he just let the office do that in a sloppy manner and then afterwards criticize the people harshly this doesn't like this is not the imam so um i hope that as that 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 inshallah our debate and our discussion will be fruitful and um, that Allah will help all of us and each of us to fight our ego and to destroy the ego before we're gonna die and inshallah khair wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh